dates of when the prayer nights were, I had looked ahead and thought, see that one in February? I'm not going to go to that one. But then whenever I got sick in January, I thought, no, I, um, what will I do? And this week, um, I got this, this little, it's a little passport, and it has come from Open Doors. And I opened it, and it says at the very start, never stop praying especially for others. It's, it's not the NIV. I think it's a contemporary English version. I had to look it up because it, was, it wasn't familiar to me, but it really struck me. Never stop praying, especially for others. Always pray by the power of the Spirit. Stay alert and keep praying for God's people. And that's Ephesians 6, verse 18, if you want to read it again. And uh, then on Thursday evening, you know, the, the weekly email came out and uh, the topic of, for today's sermon and, and the little picture that Andrew chooses and three of the words that were there, I hope I'm remembering them right because I didn't double check, were be faithful in prayer. And um, sometimes we've just got to keep going. Sometimes it's easier to kind of stay at home. Sometimes it's easier to go and do something else. Um, but we've, we're called to be faithful and we're called to persevere and to be strong in the Lord. And... Um, Yesterday at breakfast, we, we decided we'd try to use this little prayer passport. And now, if you don't know me, I'm a Spanish teacher. And my name is Jane. Emma did introduce me. But um, I'm a Spanish teacher. Now, Wednesday is my toughest day of the week. I really, really, really don't like Wednesday. And so this Wednesday, I'd love to just curl up on the sofa beside my husband and enjoy some nice chocolates. But um, I was really challenged as I read this yesterday. And um, I'm going to teach you a word in Korean. Hananim. Would you like to just repeat it? It means Lord, Hananim. And uh, there's a story in here about a Korean believer. And she remembers how as a child, she heard her mum pray this over and over again. But it's so risky in North Korea to be a Christian that the Christians there whisper it, Hananim. And um, it's the only prayer that her mum ever taught her. It's the only prayer that she ever learned to say, Hananim. And she tells how every day for her country and for her family, she whispers, Hananim, Hananim, Lord, please help. And so I want to challenge you, if you're a bit like me, and sometimes you think, oh, it'd really be just so much easier to just stay on the sofa tonight. I'm really wrecked. I'm really tired. I've had a rough day. And the last thing I want to do is get in the car and go out and go and maybe see all these people and do whatever it is that we do. I just want to challenge you to maybe think this week of the 50,000, um, it is, it's 50,000 Christians in North Korea who are in prison because of their faith and who are whispering because it's not safe. Hananim, Hananim. And so can I challenge you, if, if you haven't been along to the prayer night before, would you consider coming? We have them once a month, the second Wednesday of the month, and it's just around an hour. Now, when I was really naive and, you know, came from a different background, I used to try to make it really long because that's what I was used to. But I've kind of had to learn some of your Methodist ways because I'm not sure I'm very Methodist, but I'm still here. And um, what I'd love to encourage you to do is, can you give up an hour? Could you, could you do things a little bit differently on, on the second Wednesday of the month? And can you think of those words in that contemporary English version to never stop praying, especially for others? Because the key focus of our time when we gather that Wednesday is to pray for our church. It's to pray for one another. It's to pray for the things that happen here. It's to pray for the things in our society and it's to pray for the needs of our world. So I'm being chased. Common Wednesday. <laughs> uh, not that I don't um, see the importance for prayer. Thank you, Jane. Uh, we have a lot um, to put in. Uh, just some of you were coming in late. Encounters cancelled. Um, this evening. I have two uh, announcements for our teenagers in the room. Um, there is a youth weekend um, at the end of February, um, so speak to Andrew about that. Um, you should go to that. That will be great. Um, and also, confirmation, if you have any interest in getting confirmed, um, do talk to Andrew or Stephen on that. For the children in the room, um, Soulmates weekend is coming up for 9 to 13-year-olds. Um, but there's also a bit that will be live streamed on the Sunday. Um, I don't know if there's plans to do this in our church, but that will also be available anyway. So if you want a taster of soulmates and you're too young, there will be stuff online that you can see um, as well. Um, she has mentioned our prayer. Um, uh, just again, reiterate, welcome to um, the service. This is a bit of a different service. It's our AGM, but actually it's a chance to celebrate all that God has done in the last year. 
um, because we often uh, go through the year, church life gets busy, and we think, oh, what have we done? Where were we at this time last year? And actually, I've seen a couple of the reports or heard just a couple of things, and actually, I'm in awe of all that God has done through you guys, through people that aren't here, but through um, just the willingness to work alongside God and praise him. Um, just uh, finally, um, Stephen, uh, our lovely uh, minister over here, um, will be heading off on a sabbatical uh, shortly, a well-deserved um, sabbatical. Uh, so he's been approved by church council, by sabbatical committee and district superintendent. We put him through his paces, um, so he passed the test. Um, but I think we can all um, say, Stephen, you've been, uh, he's not leaving today, but the work that he's put in over the last few years has been actually astounding and um, through very difficult times. Um, so he'll be going from the 17th of April to 17th of July. There will be working groups put in place for pastoral care, for worship services, etc. cetera. Um, but, so that is an exciting time for Stephen and maybe a disastrous time for, no, leaving it in charge of myself and Aaron for worship services, fingers crossed. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, we're very excited and actually, the blessing of our church is that we're in such a good position that we can, we can like, it's such a blessing to be able to let Stephen go on a sabbat sabbatical because of who we are um, as a congregation um, and the structures. But we're going to work them hard until then. So Stephen, you're not going to get away without leading us in service on our AGMs and business. So I'll welcome uh, you up here. <laughs> Thank you, Emma. Uh, Aaron texted me. Um, for the notices this morning. Uh, thank you, Jane, um, for reminding us of the Wednesday night prayer meeting. I do endorse that. And our theme for the service today is very much around love. And our call to worship is, uh, is taken from these words of Jesus, uh, who spoke to his disciples at the Last Supper. And among the many things he said was this extraordinary line, just as I have loved you, you should love each other. By this will all people know that you are my disciples, that you love one another. And I hope uh, as we go through this uh, annual um, congregational meeting today and as you hear about what has been happening in the life of the church, I hope you will see a reflection of that love um, that, uh, that Jesus has called us to, a radical love, a practical love, a proactive love, and um, a compassionate love. And so we begin our worship this morning uh, with our opening hymn, Be Still, for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One, is here.
Today we are having our annual congregational meeting, but this is primarily and first and foremost a time of worship, a time of fellowship in which together we welcome, seek, and acknowledge the presence of God. So I invite you please as we pray just to be still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Let us bow before him in our hearts, in our minds, in reverence and fear. Let us be still, for his glory surrounds us. It is shining all around us. Let us be still, because his power moves among us. He is here with power to heal, with power to save with power to reconcile, with power to lift up those who are bowed down, with, with power to forgive those of us who have sinned, which is all of us, because all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And so his power is able to forgive. His grace is willing to forgive. Let us be still. For the presence of the Lord, the Holy One, is here. In quietness and rest is my strength, says the Lord. Let us join our prayers as we say together the words that Jesus taught us. We say that the words are on the screen, lest I should forget. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So, right now we normally have our children come up for our children's talk but instead today we're going to hear about what has been happening in the world of children and youth in our church but just uh, before emma comes to do that just a couple of things to say there will be some reports given during the service um, but i ask you if you have questions i ask you to take a note of those questions uh, and raise them during the second part of our meeting after coffee we'll not be taking questions during this time of worship together. Um, secondly, um, uh, both of our youth and children's workers are absent this morning, which is a shame. One for a good reason, one for a sad reason. Rachel um, uh, is, uh, well, Rachel is uh, at a youth uh, ministry conference in Eastbourne in England, so that's great news. She's gone to, to learn, um, IMYCD have paid for her to go, so that's very exciting. She'll be, um, uh, she'll be equipped there for her, for her work here. Um, Andrew sadly has, um, has become unwell and can't be here this morning. So, uh, but um, there's two very important things to say before, before Emma comes up, just about the staff that we have. Um, Rachel, as you know, was, uh, we started um, her employment back in November as our children and family worker on 10 hours a week. And in November, the church council considered a proposal to extend Andrew's hours from his current 30, 27 hours a week to a full-time salary of 36 hours a week. This was going to be dependent on getting external funding to cover the cost. Um, Home Mission Department stepped in and offered us 5,000 a year for three years, which was half the amount we needed. Uh, we reached out to Rank Trust, who have been gen very generous to the Methodist Church over the years, and they, have, they, they came back very surprisingly and offered £10,000 sterling per year for three years, which is, um, which is the, the full amount that we were looking for. And uh, when Home Missions questioned 
whether they had perhaps made a mistake in the amount of the award, they came back and said, we were very impressed with the presentation, especially from Andrew. And I think they saw in the proposal that, um, that we brought to them and that Andrew had prepared that there is a, a body of work there that, that can be done, that Rank Trust can absolutely uh, stand behind and would like to see fulfilled. So that's a real, um, we're really delighted at that. And so uh, Andrew's uh, contract has been increased to full time as of the 1st of February. So I think that deserves a round of applause, yeah, <laughs> in his absence. Uh, for anyone who's been at the church more than eight years, uh, this might feel like a flash from the past, as I used to be the youth pastor here, um, and uh, so you've heard me do this before. I am giving um, reports on behalf of Andrew, um, the Kids Faith team, and our team, and Rachel, so I will uh, bear with me in this. It's all very exciting things. So from Andrew, um, who is our youth worker, um, he's covering uh, youth group, Bible study, Wesley, CU confirmation, um, some other work. So youth group throughout 22 and 23 has been really positive. Um, oops, and we've had over 50 teenagers get involved in some shape or form. Average numbers on a Saturday night are 15 to 20, and we've had different theme nights with different games, such as hide and seek in IKEA. I brought that one into play. I'm glad that one's still going strong. And uh, none, none of you's going to come me. Um, ice skating uh, theme nights glow in the dark nights. And along with that, there's been intentional uh, youth group nights as prayer nights, um, encounter nights, so worship nights, and trips to Autumn Soul, which is focus on getting to go to know God personally. Um, especially within the last couple of weeks, we have a team really feel some of the teenagers are beginning to grasp and understand the gospel message, which has been a privilege to be part of. Um, Sunday morning Bible study has been going well on both services. Look at the picture of Andrew. Uh, <laughs> That would be the youth band. Uh, that was a band that played when the president was here. I think if you all remember, the president and uh, Tom Wilson were just astounded at um, just that we could have young people involved in our services and, and meeting. Um, uh, Sunday morning Bible studies, both services, um, the teens are brought out, and they've been looking at different uh, topics from Fruits of Spirits to dealing with doubts. Um, on Fridays, Andrew goes to Wesley CU, mainly a supportive role, encouraging teenagers and the leadership team have been doing a great job of showing uh, fellow students who Jesus is running a great after-school community. Um, with confirmation last April 2020 with four people choosing to confirm their faith, and again said there will be another one coming up, so if any teenagers are interested in that um, and going through a process, or even just investigating that, uh, do contact Andrew or Stephen. Um, but even you don't need to go through the final confirmation process. You can go and do the course and just learn more about God. But also I'd like to say, as an adult, if that's a course you wanted to do as well, go talk to Stephen. Um, there are many times to make a, a membership um, into the church. Side, side note. Um, at, at Borders Cafe in Alpha, Andrew has been working a little bit with Wesley College. Um, and so his recent development, he started Borders Cafe during the second half of the 10 a.m. service once a month, so he'll take the boarders out and run a cafe style uh, ministry in the back room. Um, uh, the format is simple, uh, who serves tea, coffee, some snacks, socialize for about 10 minutes and then do a cafe style thought or encouragement from God's word and they've been looking through Luke 5. And they've done it three times with the boarders and can say it's been going very well and important relationships are being built. And since November, Andrew's been helping uh, Mr. Mackey run Alpha in in Wesley on Tuesdays and Thursdays um, and there's been very thought-provoking and good discussions. A um, couple of youth weekends away, um, last March um, went a youth weekend where Neil Douglas was a speaker um, and they went surfing as well up in Port Rush. Um, said the surf was great which always helps but honestly it was super fun, heartfelt weekend full of good memories where we felt God uh, moved. Um, so there's another one of those weekends coming up at the end of February, so do get along to that. And I had the privilege of taking a small group of teens to Castle Welland last year. Um, it was a bit of a last minute plan, but worked out well. Um, between many pharaohs, tents and gazebos, pharaohs I think, tents and gazebos, which I thought would be blown away, 
away rice, which looked like rice pudding, to great discussions about life and faith. We had a fantastic time. It sounds like they did well to survive Castle Wellen. Yes, the nods, uh, but a great time uh, was had uh, there. Um, summer Club, uh, our children's uh, camp. We had Summer Club again this year. Uh, it's terrific to get young people back on the team again after two years COVID and to see so many of them step up into leadership positions. And the sadder side is that numbers were a little bit down um, since uh, COVID, but that being said, the campus still run to high quality and faithful message being talk, taught. So we think it'll take a little bit of time to build up a new base of summer clubbers. It's something to keep in our, our prayers. Um, huge thank you to all who have supported youth and children's ministry during the year. It is reliant on those who give up their time and finances for the youth in the community, especially to those in the youth team, Kirsty, Gavin, Lauren, Jamie, Adrian, Nikki, Hope, Lucy, and Ms. And a big thank you to Nigel for all the work you do in Wesley, which feeds into the church, and for your encouragement uh, to Andrew. Uh, thank you to Izzy, who is a great problem solver for me. Uh, that's for Andrew, also for me. Um, and, and a big thank you from Andrew. Big thank you to my parents, Bruce and Fern. So, <coughs> excuse me. Um, uh, who often help with lifts and other scenarios, especially to Fern, who provides baking on Saturdays, um, which the teens love that they can confirm. Um, if I can end on a note of encouragement, um, I know th the church has experienced a lot of loss over the last year, which has continued into this year, but Jesus says, I will build my church. God is fulfilling this word among our youth and he is building his church. I'm so encouraged by all that God has done in the youth ministry over the last year. And I'm believing that God will continue to move in 2023 and 24. So please be encouraged. Andrew. Um, do give Andrew words of encouragement when you see him back up and out and about. Um, uh, Kids Faith, moving on to our Kids Faith and ARC report that uh, during the services we have uh, children, children's ministry. ARC is for up to th three, so, oh, what's that, it is ARC? Up to junior infants, thank you. Um, and then Kids Faith from junior infants to the end of primary school. Um, so Kids Faith. Kids Faith is a team effort and we've been encouraged of late by the engagement of our children in both services. We've advocated and will continue to advocate for the, that the church family comes together at least once a month for joint services. We feel this helps our children form connections and friendships in a faith-based setting. <clears throat> we, where possible, follow the theme of the sermon or a theme that's topical or something that the Lord lays on our hearts when preparing the kids' faith. And we're starting a monthly memory verse um, that will be learned at both services and we try to cater for all ages, personalities, with stories, discussions, games, crafts, videos, clips, and prayer. Um, there's loads of kids coming out, and I think we can all say kids' faith teachers are doing an amazing thing. Because parents, you wouldn't get your kids out unless the kids' faith teachers were putting on such a good uh, service. So, um, thank you. Um, ARC, uh, for the younger ones, is going very well with lots of little people attending each week. Each week we do a short Bible study appropriate to their age, followed by a craft, and then free play. They're an absolute joy to teach and lots of fun. Many thanks to Kit, Kirsty, Millie, and Lauren for taking their turn on the rota. And uh, Linda, uh, thanks to her. And this year we have Adrian helping out as part of his placement tours for his college course on child development. So again, huge thank you to everyone um, on that. Um, Rachel O'Donoghue, um, our new children's worker, uh, she says, Hi all, apologies, I'm not here to deliver this report personally. Stephen, I don't know what your staff are getting away with these days now. <laughs> we'll have to have a word. No, we'll just we'll sort it out. Um, apologies, I'm not here. I'm away attending a children and family ministry conference in Eastbourne. I'm looking forward to developing my take-homes uh, from the conference upon my return. I've been in the role as children and family worker for under three months during that time, we've had our first event, Festive Family Fun, where approximately 35 people attended. We enjoyed Christmas family carols, crafts, carols, food, and games. Our kids' songs have also developed during the church services, and we have a song of the month, which creates the opportunity for children to explore the meaning of the song through a kid's talk based on its message, and to have fun learning the actions. Um, coming up, we have Soulmates in March, and a small group are attending that with uh, Rachel and Andrew. And we also have an Easter family event day called Egg Excitement. Um, there better be eggs, uh, which there will be more details uh, to follow. Um, 
Future goals and plans are to have a further six or more family events throughout the year to develop a monthly newsletter to families specific to children and family content and to further develop connections and relationships with current and new families in our church, uh, along with families in the community. Um, I personally want to take this opportunity to thank you as a congregation for your continued support in this role. And I hope you are as excited as I am to continue to see God's plan unfold for children and family ministry in our church. Um, you could do a whole service on kids and family ministry. Uh, there's loads going on. Thank you to all who are involved, but also those who are praying and parents who are showing up um, with their kids. Um, we have our kids song now. You know, mainly music. I don't have a mainly music report. Mainly music. Um, mainly music. If you haven't heard from mainly music, it's a weekly music and uh, rhythm class uh, with their for noughts to threes with their carers following following a, a, by a, a, an eat, play, and chat time. Sometimes it's organised chaos, but we see people relaxing over the weeks and really taking part. In addition to our weekly sessions, we celebrated Father's Day one Saturday morning in June and enjoyed the buzz of around a dozen families joining us with mums, dads and kids having a great time to delight and fun together. Uh, people expressed their appreciation for the Saturday event, so in faith we did something new and invited families to join us one Saturday afternoon in December to celebrate Christmas. We were delighted to have 17 families with us. We welcomed back some families with older kids who we hadn't seen since June and met some working parents for the first time. It was special to see three generations participating in a music session with the gospel as the central focus. People stayed on enjoying the community and friendships and we are often struck by people's sense of belonging as they take part in the sessions and help with cleaning up. Other highlights this year have included seeing new people leading the sessions, including Sally Strawhair, uh, Aaron Kumar, Kate Brady, and Hope Graham. If you're interested in finding out more um, of, or how, we could, how you can support us in prayer, or would like to explore serving young families through music, please speak to Jane. And as one of the team on, on a Tuesday morning, um, I, I know well just the extraordinary amount of work and preparation that goes into the, the sessions week by week. Uh, and Jane, of course, uh, has been the inspiration and, and the, the leadership um, over these last few years. And I just want to say a very big thank you to Jane and, of course, to the team that support her week by week. Uh, it, is, um, it is one of those things in our church that connects very strongly with the wider community. Uh, most of the people who come are not members of the church. And so there's a real connection there, uh, which, is, um, which is very, very valuable. So that concludes our youth and children's report. So we're going to have our children's song. It's, uh, it's one that um, all of us who are over the age of uh, whatever, we all, we all remember singing this at Sunday school. Jesus loves me, this I know, and the Bible. Uh, that's the song. And we're going to do some actions along the way. All right, I'm not going to. So we're just going to give it a go. So it's um, it's so so yes, Jesus loves me. Okay, yes, no, yes, <laughs> Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. Okay, um, and if you want to have a go at the verses, you can. <laughs>
Wonderful. So our children are going to go out. Uh, there's no discussion group today, sadly, because Andrew's not here. But the ARC um, are going to go out this morning with Malay. And um, Kids Faith are going to go out. Uh, I think, is Sandra, are you taking Kids Faith today? <laughs> so we will all see you later. We're going to have fun while you're gone. And uh, Aaron is going to come, and he's going to just, he's going to give uh, the steward's report as he reflects just more generally on the life of our church together. So far away. You really? Oh, hi. How are you, Hope? Good to see you. I'm not used to public speaking, so I'll keep this short. Uh, Stephen said you've got less than five minutes, so I'm going to rush through this, okay? <laughs> I suppose the good thing is that at, uh, starting at 2022, COVID was beginning to uh, be in the background a little bit more which is wonderful because then obviously we could start living the church life as we've been used to now there was probably time uh, during the COVID that we thought do we need to do something totally radical for church life etc and so on but that never occurred so we've now gone back to as it was um, hopefully still under God's direction and his anointing and his blessing upon the services and so far what we've heard that seems to be the case Okay, so as, as we said, the, uh, it was a great relief that we experienced the lifting of the restrictions and we continue to work hard to ensure, and you can see some people are still wearing masks, uh, to ensure that you know, everything was conducted in a safe environment so that people could feel comfortable when they came to church. And we started, of course, our both 10 o'clock and the half past 11 services um, Now, we continue to record because there were some people who were still concerned about coming to church so we still continue to record the services and they were piped online etc and the edited services were available for them to enjoy and be part of 2022 also saw the very important one that and we thank grace for this the elevate service which takes place every third sunday of each month for the half past 11 crowd and that's you know been very well received again once we hit the summer schedule, we ceased our regular uh, two meetings and uh, we came back to our one meeting. And the, uh, the celebrations were occasionally streamed, particularly when we had the president back in November. Uh, here's a side note though, and I'm very jealous about this particular one, very jealous. It's because uh, the, uh, since YouTube, March 20, and we started to put our services on YouTube, there's been about 30,000 views on it. So I'm very jealous because my personal view pod isn't that much at the moment. So I need to make sure that I can link it up with you guys uh, and get some more views on that as well. You can laugh at that if you wish, but you don't have to, you know. The summer schedule saw for the first time to have three months of single service running from May, June and July. During that time, uh, we tried to succeed in the various styles. We adopted the 10 o'clock style, the half past 11 style, but not just that, to make sure that you know, the, the flavor of, uh, of our church life was actually still being uh, tasted by the folks who were coming at the summer ser services but we also had an outdoor service and alternative service our alternative service included the youth service a healing service a missionary service from which we heard the Fitzsimmons are in Mozambique uh, part of our couple that we've been supporting and of course the summer club service that uh, Emma has already mentioned there's also the monthly encounter service that has begun now, we've also enjoyed two visits from the presidents uh, in the same year, two different presidents, which has been, I suppose, remarkable for any Methodist church to, to, to have. Two presidents in one year, isn't that great? Um, first one was Dr. Sa Yambuso. He joined us in a, uh, a midweek meeting and came and sort of did some stuff with us. And then obviously David Nixon came in, uh, in November. 
So we are absolutely delighted and grateful for, to God for all the services that we've been able to do to worship the Lord, to encourage one another and to praise his name and to see something of his kingdom being uh, hopefully come amongst us. Now, of course, we want to give thanks to all the folks who, who, who put so much effort to make sure that our services are taking place. So those people who sat up and, put, and sat down, the heating, the flower rota, the tea and coffee ministry, the prayer ministry, the arcs, kid discussion groups, already been mentioned, musicians, tech team, local preachers. And we need to welcome Emma, and she put this down. Make sure you say woohoo. So let's all say woohoo to Emma. She's joined the, uh, obviously, the local preachers, uh, the Elevate team, the readers, um, and of course, for every single one of you to come and to be part of this wonderful fellowship that we have, this church that we go on. Now, there's a whole list of things that we've been able to do. The, the church life, as you can see, is very, very full, which is wonderful. Uh, so I'm just going to highlight one or two things, otherwise we'll be here, and my five minutes is almost up. Okay, so... Um, we obviously have the Bible studies. Apart from the prayer times, the Bible studies are obviously very important to feed our, uh, our, not only our minds, but our souls and our spirits. And from that, we also have something called quite, um, we, we've started uh, over the last year and a half, or maybe three years maybe, uh, something called Equipping the Saints, which happens on a Saturday morning from time to time. And it's a real time to equip people with the, with the tools to how to develop your Christian life and to bring freedom to you. Last time, last Saturday, we had something called uh, Liberty in Christ, and a number of folks said, we need to hear that a bit more. So, you know, please do have the opportunity, if you do, to come. So we have the Tuesday Bible studies, which is a very important aspect, and also, thanks to, um, who is it? The Youth Bible Study, or Young People's Bible Study, that's right. Yeah, with uh, the Macadoos, that's right, thank you. Uh, Ladies Connect Group, the Mission and Evangelism course, which is run by the Methodist Church. Um, and of course, Andrew's also mentioned the youth Bible studies that are taking place. Prayer meetings, we've already mentioned them, but they are very, very absolutely, you know, it says that prayer is the very breath of, the ch of a Christian. It is also the very breath of any Christian fellowship or church ministry. So prayer is very, very important, and we have numerous prayer meetings. And then finally, food bank. I just want to update you on the food bank situation. The Crosscare Food Bank Ministry went through a radical sort of overhaul, basically meaning that our last food bank was on Wednesday. Uh, so the food bank ministry at our church here, unfortunately, is now stopping because the Crosscare guys who organize it have decided that there are other ways that they can use the ministry. So we want to thank everyone who's been involved with the food ministry. It's been a vital part of our church life. We've seen many people come. We've seen ma many of them receive their food parcels and hopefully been blessed as well. So that has been a link with the community. Unfortunately, we need to find and discover new links as God opens other doors for us. So the food ministry is now stopped. Okay, I think that will do from me. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Aaron. I was, I, I was looking at the list there. Put it back, please. Um, I noticed the badminton's missing from that. That's a real sorry, sorry about that. Is there anything else we've missed off that? I mean, it's... Are you okay is missing off that. Yes, we need to get that updated. Are you okay? Well, that, that comes under prayer meetings. Yeah, we've got prayer meetings and Bible studies. Yeah, we haven't listed all the Bible studies, but the Monday night group is... Sorry, Forever Friends is there. Yeah, Forever Friends is there. Have we missed anything else? But look, um, it's an extraordinary number of different... You think about the number of people who are involved in each of those, and it, it shows really a, 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 such an active uh, congregation. And we're going to go on now to, to hear from um, one of the most um, active um, groups within our church, and it's the Eco Congregation Group who have a very busy schedule. We're going to hear just uh, for a couple of minutes what they have been doing and, and planning for the years, uh, year ahead.
Good morning, and um, I will try and be brief, briefer than usual. Um, we've had a very busy year. Uh, it was great to get back doing things after COVID the last couple of years. Most of that has been done online or through our, our news sheet, which of course is online as well. So in the last year, we've, I'm hoping the slides will come up uh, uh, and hope I can see them from here. Uh, we've been uh, involved in these things in reminding you and encouraging you to participate in the Fair Trade Fortnight, Lenten Reflections, Earth Hour, uh, Christian Aid Week, Creation Tide, Climate Action Week, and also encouraging everybody to engage in climate action, which involves lobbying our, na our local and national representatives. Um, we really have a voice and we should use it, and all of these things that to do with, with um, creation care, care for the environment, climate change, all come under the umbrella of justice, which is so, so, is a real biblical imperative. So, really, we ask everybody to reflect on these um, announcements and uh, encouragements as they come up and see what, what, how you can get involved. We've been busy working on the food waste project and um, I don't know whether we'll have time for Rose to talk a little bit about that later on. Uh, we've been in mon monitoring our environmental impact and we were delighted uh, to use the budget that we got from the council uh, in purchasing outdoor furniture, which I hope uh, you've noticed and it will be placed around the grounds and hope that people will enjoy in the better weather to come and in planting out. And for that, we thank Kirsty and Izzy, uh, who were very much involved in that. And we're very sorry that Kirsty, due to her work and family um, commitments, uh, has had to resign from our, our meeting, is our team. So we really will miss her, um, her input, but we are so grateful for it. Perhaps the main event of the year was the eco event, which we had, um, which we entitled Respect, but really it, we, we used the working title eco event for nearly everything. And that brought in a lot of, of interest, not just within the church, but within the community and beyond. And it was, um, Rose came up with the idea, oh, over a year ago, that we might do a workshop and get people to come in and re poster things or repair things or whatever. To cut a long story short, and I know I bored you with all the details, months ago we got um, sponsorship from the local council and different places and the, uh, expertise from within our congregation and without. And we had a super day in November where um, uh, we, also, we also got uh, mention on the radio and an interview on the radio as well for 30 minutes in local interview, local radio. So that was really good bringing people in and I think they very definitely were impressed and enjoyed the atmosphere and what we were doing. Uh, we had a, a great deputation from Blally Church and um, I think we're, we, we hope to work on that. Uh, we have over the years worked together with them and there is a great um, desire from the local churches which I don't think I put in the report uh, when, when writing it a great desire from the local churches that the Three Rock Churches Environment Group would get working again. Uh, there's a lot to be done, there's a lot of obviously urgent interest in this and it is as, as I said earlier a biblical imperative that we work and respect uh, uh, care, for, care for, for, for the environment and creation. Um, what are we going to do now? Uh, some of you will have heard that we're hoping to engage in planting a micro or a mini forest in the church grounds, just a small area in the ground. And this was inspired by Robert Heslip, Norma's son, who is a landscape gardener in France. And he suggested to us that we might do this. Uh, there, there's um, information there on the, on the PowerPoint and there's also out on the notice board and you can Google it yourselves. Basically, the idea is that trees would grow very quickly, uh, obviously for their carbon storage, for, for their, their intertwining of their roots, uh, providing nutrients for the soil, increasing biodiversity, which is sorely needed, it's an urgent need, and becoming a, a feature in the community and perhaps something that, that we can be, uh, hopefully in time be proud of and delighted that we're doing. Lots of schools and public places are doing this likewise. So we're very grateful to Robert, who's offered his, his expertise, advice, and prepared to come and oversee the planting. Um, 
So we would envisage inviting community local schools and churches to participate in the project. Going forward, I've mentioned that, that we hope to get in touch with the churches, and I missed that on the report, I apologise. We wish to progress the food waste project uh, to increase uh, contact with the Global South community and to encourage integration of creation, care, respect for the earth into every aspect of church life, from worship to outreach, both within the church, in, in the structure of the church, and in the grounds. And obviously, we want to commence this microforest project. We're grateful to all those who have helped and supported us and encouraged, and especially those the volunteers who came on the, the open day. We, we couldn't have managed without you and we're really grateful. Uh, I've mentioned we're sorry that Kirsty is leaving us. And finally, and so important then, just to mention again, everything we do is underpinned by this um, belief that creation matters to God and it is our responsibility to respond to it uh, in all our choices and aspirations. Thank you for your time. I'm sure I went over mine, but... So the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, uh, the world and every living thing. We're going to continue to hear from the Word of God now as uh, Tracy comes to bring our two readings for us. The first reading is taken from Romans Chapter 12, verses 9 to 18. Love in action. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honour one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervour, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. And the second reading is taken from John's first letter, chapter 4, verses 7 to 12. God's love and ours. Dear friends, let us love one another. For love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. Amen. Thank you, Tracy. Our next hymn is uh, scripture put to song. It is the opening verses that I, I read at the start of the service. A new commandment I give unto you. We'll stand to sing this together.
Please be seated. I just say before I start, uh, I'm very grateful to the church uh, for being um, for, for releasing me to, to take a sabbatical break um, over the, 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 the summer months. Um, and uh, it's, it's a great privilege and honor to be able to do that, just to, to seek times of refreshing uh, and renewal so that I can better serve you um, on, on my return. And I'm going to give a full report about what my hopes and, and plans are for that um, in the coming weeks. So I'll say no, no more about it just for now. Um, over the last um, uh, couple of weeks, uh, I've been looking at uh, the I am statements of Jesus, statements that he makes about himself that he could only make if he were truly unique and divine. No ordinary person could say the things that he says in those I am statements. Already I've looked at uh, the I am the true vine, I am the resurrection and the life, and I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Next week, I'm going to look at I am the bread of life as we share communion together. No ordinary or even or no remarkable person could say such things. They are a mark of his unique authority and his divine nature that he's able to say these things. But what do others say about him? Those who lived with him, around him, who witnessed him. What do they say about them? One such witness was John. And John says of Jesus, God, well, he says, God is love. God is love. And everyone who has been born of God knows God. And so we see in the very person of Jesus, the character uh, and uh, the character and the very nature of God displayed to us. Uh, and love, um, he says, everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. So love is rooted in God. It originates in him. It reflects his character, his nature. It is practical and it is proactive. 1 John 4.10 says, this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be an atoning sacrifice for our sins. He never writes anybody off. He never gives up on anybody. He always seeks to, to reconcile people to himself, to, be, to restore people, to renew us. That's what he does. That's the nature of love. John goes on to say, Dear friends, since God has so loved us, we also ought to love one another. And in our call to worship this morning, I quoted from Jesus. We've just sung the words, As I have loved you, so you must love one another. And how we love, it reflects directly on our relationship with God and how we are seen by others. To truly know Him is to love Him. That's a well-known phrase. But to truly love Him is to love like Him. To love like Him. This imperative to love is so clearly and so frequently found throughout the whole witness of Scripture from the very beginning to the very end. Moses says it in Leviticus 19 when he says, love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus, of course, quotes it as, as the, at the heart of the gospel. Jo Jesus says it in John chapter 13, love one another as I have loved you. Paul says it in Romans 12, be de devoted to one another in love. Peter says it in every single chapter of his first letter. John says it in 1 John, as we have just heard. And Paul makes the point that love is not a feeling. It's an act of the will. It is something that we do. It is a practical thing. And he gives practical examples of what love looks like. And he shows us that that the love within us, that godly love within us, leads us to be joyful in hope, to be patient in affliction, and to be faithful in prayer. And this love, according to Paul, um, leads us to share with the Lord's people who are in need, to practice hospitality, to, to bless those who persecute us, to live in harmony with one another, to live at peace insofar as it is possible with others around us. He calls upon us to rejoice with those who rejoice and to mourn 
with those who mourn. And this is the point I want to to make my pastoral report as we reflect on those words, to mourn with those who mourn. Because here in Dundrum Methodist Church, we are a small community of people from many different backgrounds, nationalities, and cultures, united by our love for God and our faith in Jesus Christ. Over the last... um, this is, this is the, the, the love that we have for each other. It's the glue that binds. It is the oil that heals and keeps the wheels turning, to mix a few metaphors. And I want to commend you as the congregation, the, the members of Dundrum Methodist Church community, for the extraordinary way that you engage with each other. You engage with the gospel of Jesus Christ. I want to commend you for the love that you show to one another, for sharing with each other in times of need, for practicing hospitality, for living in harmony, for doing what is right. Over the last seven years or so, it has been my privilege to be able to serve within this church community. And I have been, I have been blessed, I'm sure, many times more by you than I have blessed you. And it has been an honor to serve here. Are we perfect in all respects? No, of course we're not. Are we always harmonious? No, of course there are disputes. But what I have witnessed and what I have seen is that where there have been disputes, where there has been difference, these things have been managed with grace and forbearance and with patience. We are, of course, a work in progress and we still have much to learn. But I want to reflect on those words, mourn with those who mourn. There has been, as we all know, an unprecedented number of bereavements in our church over this past year. And I want us to take a few moments to remember those from our church fellowship who have died in the past 12 months or so. And so we remember John Bailey, Cherry Bothwell, Albert Brooks, Des Glynn, Greta Bailey, Elizabeth Barr, Luke Doherty, Gabriel O'Neill, George Tracy, Jan McConnell, and just in these last two weeks, a former member of this church, Dennis Brownlee, who died in County Down. Many of these names represent people who have been pillars of this church community. Others you may not be so familiar with, but all of them have been a part of our church fellowship. And what has been remarkable is the amazing love and support that has been shown by this church family to each of those bereaved families. And in addition to the deaths that I've just mentioned, there have been many, many other bereavements in our church family. Members of our church community have lost parents, brothers, sisters, other close relatives. And we have also hosted three funerals in this church building um, on, for Dublin Central Mission, where funerals are very difficult to manage. And the response of, these, of this church to each of these losses has been immense. People have gathered around, supported, prayed, prepared meals, delivered flowers, prepared tea and sandwiches at the funerals. And we as a, a family, we have personally experienced the kindness and compassion of this congregation Uh, following the death of Linda's father in March. And for that, we say thank you. And I think the families too would want to thank you for what you have done. After one funeral that was held in this church, a non-Christian mourner said to one of the family after the service, now I understand, now I can see what it's all about. Having heard the message of hope in Christ and felt the love in the room that was so clearly evident. So these times of of loss and mourning and sadness are also times of hope, 
also times of witness to our local community. And we continue to pray for those who are on firm and unwell. We have two members currently in nursing homes and others who are being cared for at home. So our thoughts and prayers continue for all who have lost loved ones and who continue to struggle with ill health. And we are eternally grateful to God for those saints who have gone before us and shown us in some measure the love of God in Christ. We just pause for a moment. We've also had cause for celebration in this year, or as Paul puts it, to rejoice with those who rejoice. In the past year, we have had three baptisms in this church. Isla Payne last January in the Miles Hall, Aaron Snay outside in July, and Addison Hammond here last August. And also Gabriella Quigley was dedicated here in November when the president visited We've also celebrated the birth of Hannah Campos in June. She will be dedicated here uh, in a combined service on the 5th of March in just one month's time, and we look forward to that. We've also heard uh, from Emma about the confirmations we've had in this past year. Four young people, uh, where they made a public profession of faith in this church back in April. There's been staffing changes, as we've already told you, uh, which is a thing to, to celebrate. Um, there's been changes to our membership role. We've, uh, five, five people have moved on from our congregation and have moved away to other things or have um, become disengaged with our congregation. Others have transferred out to another circuit, including Jules Hamilton, who uh, ceased his work as a, as a chaplain in Trinity College back in June and is now a circuit minister in Northern Ireland. We've had a number of new members, uh, some of whom are young people and others who have been joined to our congregational role. And we've had a number of new families who have become active with us as well, um, at least five families, uh, most with children, who have become active in our church family, and we're delighted to see them and to see them engage with us. Uh, so I think... That really concludes uh, just um, a bit of statistics. Our official community role has 420 members. Uh, our official um, uh, full membership is 182, and we have 97 juniors. If you're wondering where they all are, well, I was uh, amazed to hear that 50 of them are teenagers and they attend our youth club, and uh, many others are attending our uh, kids' programs in the church as well. And so we are going to conclude this pastoral report with a time of prayer together. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to remember first and foremost those who have been bereaved in this past year to celebrate the lives of those whom we see no more to thank you for the extraordinary Christian witness that so many of them displayed day and daily in their relationships, in their service, in their work, in their prayer. Father, for all who have been bereaved, we seek and we continue to pray for their comfort, strength, and healing. For those who are struggling with ill health, Lord, may your healing hand be upon them and may your grace be sufficient in their time of struggle. For those, Lord, facing difficult challenges in work or at home, those who are struggling because of broken relationships or because of financial loss, we pray, Lord, that you would be their provider, their healer, their companion, and their friend. And Lord, for this church, we pray that we would continue to hold up Christ as, as our Lord and our Master, as our guide and our defender. 
And may we continue to witness to the goodness of God as we live our lives each and every day. These and all our prayers we ask in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we sing our concluding hymn. What else could we sing when the theme is love? Um, Charles Wesley's great anthem to love, love divine or love's excelling. So we're going to, to pause now for a coffee, and uh, I do hope that uh, you'll be able to stay for the second part of our meeting as we start to look at the nuts and bolts of, uh, of our church life. And uh, as, uh, as we break for coffee, let us bless each other with the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. We will reconvene at 12.30.